In the other corner, wearing the blue trunks, is James B. Conant. Now, Conant was called the other Harvard president by people who didn't particularly care for him. And uh, they were trying to point out that Charles W. Eliot was the real Harvard president and James B. Conant, even though he too was also a Harvard president and he too was also a chemistry person, uh, was a sad carbon copy. Along, come, along comes James B. Conant. In the same year as Rickover, he too wrote a book, The American High School Today. This was the report of an educational testing service study funded through the Carnegie Foundation. Conant went out and studied. Conant supposedly went out and studied a number of high schools with a high degree of comprehensiveness. I believe I mentioned this in the next uh, item. Studied. Some critics say he never actually did the research. 22 high schools with a high degree of comprehensiveness. Now I say that because one, this is a long, 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 long time ago. Uh, must have been 1973-ish, maybe four. I went to a convention in Chicago at which James B. Conant was a speaker. And before he had even begun, a gentleman in the audience stood up and said, Dr. Conant, I was principal of such and such high school in Illinois. Back when you did your American High School Today research, you said we were one of the schools that you studied. I never saw you. I never saw anyone who said they were representing you. Did you really do that study? And of course the room exploded with all kinds of Whoa, whoa, mumble, mumble, all kinds of things going on. Uh, in the time we were talking to one another, the man disappeared. I don't know whether he was dragged out or whether he had simply come there to plant a bomb and then leave, but uh, there are folks who question whether uh, Conant fudged his data in order to come up with what he wanted. What he did <clears throat> advance were 21 recommendations. And I am not going to read these to you. Uh, let's just say that they were suggestions that comprehensive schools would do well to follow if they wanted to become more successful than they were at the time. They are listed on the next three slides. Hi, there's a little glitch there. Uh, I went uh, I went over these very quickly, and then I thought, well, gosh, they need some time to look at them. Uh, and I, I don't know how this format is going to be delivered and whether you will be able to stop at certain places or not. So I thought I would just spend a little more time uh, on these pages. You will notice there's not a a good break between the previous slide and this one uh, wasn't able to do it so you will notice some uh, like I say it's a glitch these are the first seven of Conan's recommendations I will move on now to the the next slide these are 8 through 16 and notice that all of these are simply things that schools can do to make their institutions better. They are suggestions from Conan for uh, things that will perk up the school. Last ones, 17 through 21. 
Hopefully you can you can go through those at your leisure. You perhaps can find them in a book if you are interested in pursuing them or in in uh, using them somewhere in your research. In addition to the above 12, excuse me, the above 21, it's my dyslexia kicking in, Conant also recommended a reduction in the number of high schools from 21,000 to 9,000 to permit each larger resulting school to offer an adequate program. This is consolidation. We are taking small schools and putting them together to make large schools. This is something from Conan's report that was adhered to. Uh, many districts did not want to do this, but they could see the handwriting on the wall. Uh, it would be much cheaper for them to do this. Many small districts have still said, no, we want our separate idea. We will stay small schools. So, uh, so they stayed small. What Conant wanted was comprehensive schools rather than specialized ones. Hence, he differs from Rickover in that desire. Conant continued. Actually, Conant didn't continue. We did. Theodore Sizer, remember him from the age of the academies. He was Mr. Academy. Noted that Conant's recommendations were not very different from those voiced by Charles W. Eliot in 1885. There's that comparison to Eliot again. But Conant carried the day. The public in Congress listened to Conant as opposed to Rickon. Probably because Conant was an advocate of moderate change. Rickover wanted to revamp everything. Start from scratch, new buildings, separate focus of buildings, national testing. Conant simply wanted to tweak what was already in effect. Plus, even though he's a college guy talking about high schools, Conant was still an insider. He was from education. Rickover was an outsider. He was a military man. He was also, and we've characterized some other people like this in the past, he was an elitist. He was for the top folks. Cared very little for those at the bottom of the heap. Wow, we Americans seem to hate elitists. And we will do anything we can to say, uh, you like it so much that way you go back to where you came from. 